Here's Monica. She's about to undergo some ovum pickup. So first of all, we've given her a cordial epidural anaesthetic to anaesthetize her properly. She seems to have taken. I've also given her a small dose of ACP in the tail vein. So now we're ready to proceed. The ultrasound probe is always gloved up freshly for each cow, so we keep it very, very clean and there's no danger of transmitting anything from one cow to the other as we go through the morning. Now before we put the probe, ultrasound probe into the vagina, I've got to empty the rectum out so there's nothing in there except for my arm and the rectal wall to make it easy for me to grasp the ovaries and place them in close opposition to the head of the probe. Always just check at this stage that the reproductive tract is normal and I can find both of the ovaries and pull them up okay. out of the bursa, yet yeah, to make sure I can undertake the procedure safely. I double glove so I can keep my arm inside the rectum while I clean her up so that no air gets into the rectum because it makes it difficult to do the procedure if it does. So there's a cleaner glove now. That's better. Try and make sure the whole area is completely clean and I'm just using a couple of swabs with surgical spirit on to make sure everything is nice and clean before we put the probe into the vagina. So inside the glove, on top of the head of the probe, is a little bit of KY jelly to ensure we get a nice picture. And actually on the outside of the glove is some lube rail to make it easy to go inside the cow. The probe has been designed with a nice handle that my assistant can hold, hold it in place nice and firmly for me when it's opposed to the ovary without getting in the way of the needle holder as it goes in and out. So now what I've got, I've got in my hand, I've got her right over, I always start with the right hand side and I've got the probe firmly into the vagina, Roz has got hold of it and now what we're going to do is introduce the needle through the needle guide and Ros takes hold of the handle and I'm now just going to gently push the needle guide such that the needle emerges through the end right next to where the probe is and I can clearly visualize the needle going inside the follicular structure sucking out the follicular fluid and hopefully the oocyte that we need to collect. Okay pedal. You can hear the little noise going there which reassures me the vacuum's working. Here we go. Okay, Ross, take there, please. So after I've punctured a few follicles, we pull the needle guide out and flush through the collection medium, which clears the tube, stops any blood clotting in it, and you can see the fluid passing down the tube into the water bath. The water bath is kept at 35 degrees, uh, which is the optimum temperature for the oocytes at this point in time. The temperature in the room needs to be above 27, ideally about 30 degrees centigrade, because again the oocytes are very temperature sensitive. So what I'm doing with my hand is gently holding onto the ovary. What I'm doing is pulling the ovary around such that the follicle comes to lay just where the needle emerges. So I can accurately penetrate the follicle, remove the follicular fluid and hopefully the oocyte with it. The quicker the needle gets directly into the follicle, the more likely you are to be able to retrieve the oocyte. If you try and go through too much ovarian stroma, there's a danger you go either in front of or behind the follicular structure. Okay. So the equipment I'm using today has been made for our project by BCF. Uh, this is the third set of equipment I've been using and I must say it's the best so far. The uh, handle used is really 
better for my assistant to work with me and the picture I'm getting on the screen is, is the best I've had to work with so far. Hopefully that means we're getting more follicles punctured, more oocytes collected and ultimately more embryos produced and more pregnancies thereafter.